Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India One single factor which has been the most enabling in terms of uh, globalization is the new media and technologies. If you think of what are the causes of globalization and how the new global process differs from the earlier waves of globalization, the one factor that has caused this is the emergence of the, the improvement in communication and uh, transpor transportation technologies and the emergence of the new media. What is different in this present wave of globalization and is the speed and the ease with which communication takes place across long distances. And the reason why we call it long distance connectedness is because of the amazing speed and ease with which we are able to not only travel but also communicate across large distances. So once again, like we did in the case of the nation and other aspects of globalization, before we understand the impact of new technologies on globalization, let's try to understand how technologies begin and how technologies uh, work and two, let's look at some of the major theorists of the media to see what they think about technologies and the electronic media. We'll begin with uh, the idea of technological determinism or techno -de determinism, which is a contested idea. Some people, uh, some theorists don't quite agree of the mechanical theory of techno determinism, which they think is very artificial and which is very limited, but let's for the sake of a working de definition borrow this theory which means that techno determinism means that it's predicated on the idea that any shift in technology brings about corresponding transformations in society, knowledge and the self. So whenever we switch from an old technology to a new technology, it brings about not just technological te transformation. So in other words, just an improvement in the means of communication doesn't mean uh, can, it doesn't mean that we'll be able to communicate with greater speed and efficiency, but it also means complete transformation of the self, of the community, and also the way we constitute knowledge. So uh, this begins with the idea of writing itself as a technology. The first phase shift we see in the uh, movement of technologies is the shift from speaking to writing, uh, the invention of script, and the shift from speaking to ri writing, which was considered a very major phase shift in the history of the world, in the sense to the extent that it completely transformed the consciousness of the world. Uh, it not only transformed the consciousness of human beings uh, to the extent that the idea of individuality or the rational subject of the autonomous rational subject of rationality is believed to have emerged with the invention of writing, uh, which is very different from the psychodynamics of orality. So what happened uh, when we moved over from speech to writing? What happened was uh, a complete transformation, not only in the idea of the self, but also in the idea of society, and also the way we constitute knowledge. There is a myth about, uh, about a god, uh, about uh, about a mythical king who when he came to know about the invention of writing about the introduction of writing 
expressed his misgivings by saying that writing would, he banned writing from his kingdom because he felt that writing would take away the real power of people's memory and they would have only false memory. Uh, Plato um, mentions this uh, story to express uh, his own fears of writing and the changes that would be brought about by writing, uh, by the introduction of writing. A similar fear of writing exists in uh, oral cultures which, uh, f which, uh, which have not, which have not uh, uh, switched over to writing in certain spheres of life, ri life because speaking is supposed to possess certain special powers which are destroyed by the invention of writing. And the most, uh, um, the best known work on the shift from write speech to writing is that of the priest of, uh, of Walter jo J. Ong. His book, Orality and Literacy, Technologizing of the World, is a seminal study that drew heavily on the work of Eric A. Havelock to throw light on the extent to which technologies determine human existence. Now, uh, Ong says, Ong sees a phase shift from morality to literacy and he says that it completely transforms society, culture and human consciousness. Primary, primary oral culture, uh, he defines as those which were characterized by literacy on the basis of their dominant mode of communication. Arguing that sight isolates, sound incorporates, he viewed writing as a technology that transforms consciousness through increasing interiority and individuation. Ong makes, made a distinction between primary and secondary or orality because his book stops with writing and he does not take into account electronic technologies, but he does gesture to it, allude to it briefly by making a distinction between primary and secondary or orality. Uh, secondary orality is the orality which is produced by the electronic media and which he thinks is quite different from primary or orality which is the orality of people who are not literate, whereas sec secondary orality is already contaminated by literacy. So, uh, the beginning of the transformation that electro electronic media could possibly have on the lives of people was first suggested in Ong's book in the mention of secondary orality. Uh, when, uh, and then we move on to uh, Anderson's idea of uh, the nation and how print technology, uh, the invention of printing technology, the birth of newspapers and right led to the development of the autonomous rational self of modernity and also to the birth of the nation. Similarly, when we look at the new information technology, we see a similar phase shift in the history of the in the history of technologies and the history of the world with new information technology, new media, the idea of the subject as non-unitary, the idea of the community, the imagining of the community as different from the earlier communities that is already being debated over the last three or four decades. The, this, these technologies have led to deterritorialization and they have led to the production or the emergence of a diasporic public sphere and led to ultimately led to new imaginings of self and community. Let me now quickly summarize for you the ideas of some of the major theorists of media uh, and the reason why I am introducing you to these major theorists is that when later we look at culture and we look at the emergence of certain cultures in the era of globalization we would see that uh, many of the findings or many of the formulations or propositions made by these theorists are undone or disproved by the emergence of new media and technologies in the new global world. 
So, we begin with the Frankfurt School, which consisted of a number of uh, theorists who were not, uh, who did not have, uh, who were quite different from one another, but they all clubbed together under the name Frankfurt School. And one of the la leading theorists in the school was Adorno, who um, uh, adopted an elitist stance in holding the mass media culpable of diluting and undermining the values enshrined in high culture. So, the Frankfurt School was essentially opposed to the mass media and uh, it was writing mainly during the first broadcast era with the emergence of uh, in relation to the mass media of newspapers, mainly the radio and also film, but all and later television. So, uh, the fears of these uh, Frankfurt theorists, uh, theorists uh, was that culture which would now be the possibility of circulation would make high cu culture easily available to the masses, the common masses who did not have the power to discriminate between good high and low culture, between good art and low art and that would A, uh, lead to the dilution of high culture and two, it would deprive, um, undermine the values enshrined in high culture. So, it was a very elitist kind of uh, opposition to the circulation of uh, culture through the mass media. Uh, and we would find later that uh, even though the Frankfurt School theorists have been uh, questioned and discredited by the new theorists of media, some of the misgivings about the mass media still hold even in the era of globalization. So, Horkheimer decried them, the, that is the mass media for depriving individuals of autonomous action and for spreading and legitimating dominant ideology. This is, uh, this is an aspect of uh, mass, mass media or of the media which is very, very pertinent even at this date because media uh, which was the fear of the Frankfurt School theorists was feared to propagate, was uh, feared to, be to become an instrument in the, in the hands of dominant groups and become an instrument in the propagation of dominant ideologies. Lazarsfeld, who talked about the narcotizing dysfunction of the mass media such as film the soap opera and the variety show um, is, uh, ref is, uh, is echoed in, uh, in commonplace statements about the media, particularly television reducing human beings to passive consumers, to couch potatoes and, uh, and losing their ability to think clearly, losing their ability to discriminate between the good and the bad. So, this pessimistic view of the media as a threat to the democratic process and elite cultural institutions still continue to govern objections to the mass media. And this view has dominated modernistic understandings of the mass media. The critique of the effects of mass media is derived from the Frankfurt School theorists. Now, let us quickly name these high priests of culture, the theorists of the Frankfurt School, Duhamel and Film, Adorno who theorized mainly in relation to radio and tele television, Althusser and mass media, Habermas and his idea of the public sphere, Walter Benjamin and Film and Baudrillard's idea of the simulacra. The f what were the, uh, the theory of the effects of media? Uh, is dominated by the views of the Frankfurt School. Uh, the Frankfurt School's view of the mass media gives them and the culture industry a role of ideological dominance which destroys both bourgeois individualism and the revolutionary potential of the working classes. According to them, the mass media leads to the manipulation of the consciousness of the masses and silence resistance to the dominant capitalist class. It also leads to the standardization of cultural production 
and its termination by the profit motive. And it it's assumed that the top to down flow of culture from the elite to the masses due to concentration of ownership and control of the media and the formation of the media elite indulging in forms of cultural dictatorship. This view of the effects of media has been critiqued in the recent times uh, by a number of theorists of media. So this idea of mass media as instruments of control according to new media theorists it is based on the broadcast model of the first media age of few producers and many consumers. And this idea is based on the binary of the autonomous heteronymous subject of modernity and it seems to reek of technological determinism. One of the uh, modern theorists of media who was uh, very positive rather than pessimistic about the possibilities of new media other than Walter Benjamin who is classified among the Frankfurt School theorists but was less critical and more optimistic of the media is Marshall McLuhan who uh, had a very positive image of uh, with, with whom a positive image of the electronic media began to emerge in the West. McClough had a faith in the positive effects of the electronic media uh, and this seems to have been corroborated by new media theorists in the digital era. McClough's theories form a comforting counterpoint to pessimistic denunciations of the mass media by Frankfurt School theorists. It is also led uh, the revival of the debate on media effects that began in the 30s and 40s with the arrival of satellite technologies that appear to have ushered in a phase shift similar to that from orality to literacy and from writing to print. So there seems to be a revival of this debate on media effects particularly with the onset of globalization. Uh, the Second Media Age, a book by Mark Oster, uh, in, uh, talks about intersection of globalization and media with new te telecommunication technologies. Oster holds that one can see new ways of production of locality in the, new, uh, in the global era. It is also marked by new relations of production, transmission and reception. He places an emphasis on the role of communication technologies and he feels that the linguistic turn is emancipatory for subject construction. Marx, Mark Booster in his book in his essay What is the matter with the internet talks about cyber uses the term cyber democracy and he feels that uh, the new media, the new electronic media instead of uh, holding, uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, reducing uh, the, uh, the, the consumers to passive consumers and uh, instead of enslaving them to the pleasures of entertainment have particularly the in internet have led to what he calls cyber democracy and they have been liberatory, they have been very emancipatory because the technologies uh, in the present world which are interactive uh, enable anyone in the world to transmit their information or ideas across the world without mediation by uh, without med mediation by any other any other powerful group. So technologically at least it is possible for anyone to circulate their ideas particularly through the medium of internet if not through television and radio with the new improved technologies. 
So, we are talking about global citizens, we are talking about netizens, citizens and subjects and Arjuna Padurai who I have already spoken about, he emphasizes on the cultural aspect of globalization, he speaks about the mass circulation of people and images and he lays an importance on the primacy of the image. Apadurai talks about globalization, uh, I have uh, and I have already introduced you to the idea of scapes. Uh, uh, what I would like to s uh, say in relation to the new theories of media is that the old critique of media if uh, and the old theory of the media effects was based according to Mark Poster on the idea of a single consumer and multiple uh, of a single producer and multiple consumers. And this single con producer uh, uh, which was often the state would have the power to dominate the minds of millions of consumers through the possibilities of circulation of their ideas. And media has always has uh, traditionally played this important role as serving the instrument of dominant groups within any uh, within any nation. But uh, uh, the the critique of the Frankfurt School and older theorists of media was well placed within the within the uh, re uh, contingencies of the earlier broadcast model, where this was a reality, but today the mediatized world is very different from the older media world, the older media scape and the second broadcast age as Poster calls it is, is substantively different in the, in not only in, in the change in the nature of ownership because media ownership is comparatively if not fully more distributed in uh, so that the model of a single producer and multiple consumers uh, seems to have been demystified, uh, disrupted by the emergence of multiple producers, maybe some dominant producers and some non-dominant producers and similarly multiple consumers. So, in the present media scape, it is possible for uh, for consumers to be more selective, to choose uh, uh, to choose the greater choice of media that they have today with the multiplicity of ownership allows them to compare one uh, ideological uh, view against the other and not, not take media at their face value as they tended to do in the past. Secondly, uh, the, the media themselves as Poster puts it have become more interacted because uh, they are no longer one way channels as they were in the uh, first broadcast era because today even in the traditional media like um, radio and television the possibilities for interactivity are infinite uh, infinite in terms of uh, uh, participation by uh, the audience by listeners through request through sending questions, through voting, through, uh, through, through live conversations. So, the media seem to have become more interactive so, and the audience can express their views directly or indirectly, um, merely by switching off from certain media the, in, in, a, in a media scape which offers such a wide variety of choices, the audience can express their displeasure or they can ex exercise their option. Apart from that, they can actively intervene, directly intervene in media through modifying, through questioning, through interrogating what or by comparing different media that they have access to today. So, the media have become more interactive in the present. And finally, uh, the most important media in the present context is internet, which infinitely increases the possibility, the democratic or liberatory possibilities of media as compared to the first broadcast age, because it technically enables any consumer, anyone to become a producer. And it also offers the possibilities 
to any person to disseminate their ideas across the world. Uh, I am saying technologically, uh, there might still be limitations, political, legal restrictions on the, not only on the uh, dissemination of ideas, but also the production, because uh, one requires, in order to produce uh, media content, one does require uh, resources, one requires finance. So, uh, unless one is equipped with resources, uh, it's it's not impossible, but it's difficult for anyone any, anyone to create content or or to disseminate one's ideas. Uh, other than that, there are political and legal restrictions uh, through the surveillance maintained on the media that prevents people from that prevents the media scape from being completely emancipatory, com completely liberatory. The examples of people circulating um, their, uh, their own productions on internet through YouTube and the number of hits they receive, the number of viewers they receive shows that it is technically possible for people to participate in the new media scape and to become producers uh, in addition to being more selective, more uh, uh, discrimina discriminating consumers. With this, uh, we conclude this discussion on the media, on the new uh, telecommunication technologies and media. Ultimately, we'll say that not only have they enabled the, uh, not only do they possess the possibilities of connecting the world, different parts of the world, which uh, which uh, doesn't need uh, uh, much elaboration, but they also have created uh, a liberatory media scape, which through which cultural circulation takes place today. Thank you.